Welcome to The Foster. I'm Ann Baxter and I'm sitting in front of a mural of Tony Foster painting in the rainforest in Borneo in 2015. And joining me via Zoom is the artist explorer himself, Tony Foster in Cornwall, England. Thank you for taking time for this conversation, Tony. Yeah, you're welcome. I think I'll, I'll duck out of the way and here, here you are a few <laughs> years ago. <laughs> but we didn't want to confuse with two Tony Fosters, so. <laughs> We're both <laughs> we one of the same. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> we have at the Foster the painting that you're painting in this photograph from near Paku Falls looking south five days. So you spent five days in the rainforest here working on the painting. It's about four feet square. It's quite large and beautiful. It has inscriptions and characteristic souvenirs of some mementos from painting experience there. Of course, your topo map and then some other elements that you've watercolored. So we'll go into details about the artwork, but first we want to talk about the luminary who sent you, one of two luminaries who sent you on your way to Borneo. And uh, S Professor Sir Gillian Prance recommended that you paint the rainforest in Borneo. I wonder if you could talk about your friendship with him and your association. I know you go way back. We do go way back because, um, uh, actually, um, his friends call him Ian, so I'm entitled to call him Ian Prance. Uh, you, you perhaps have to call him Professor Sir Gillian Prance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, He's one of the world's great uh, tropical biologists and, and a much revered figure. He used to be a director of the New York Botanical Garden and then luckily for us came back to the UK where he, uh, he is British uh, and ran uh, Kew Gardens for, the, uh, um, for a very long time and, uh, and is still extraordinarily active uh, traveling all over the world and helping with rainforest projects. It's interesting that he recommended this rainforest in Borneo as one of the most beautiful rainforests in the world because he has spent a lot of his time in the Amazonian forests in South mm. America. Yeah. And um, I was reading that he noted that you should travel to Borneo and paint this rainforest because it's maybe a more dramatic rainforest. The canopy is taller and there are some amazing trees that are maybe 200 feet uh, from the floor all the way up, extending maybe a hundred feet beyond the canopy. So he found these forests to be particularly majestic and beautiful. And I was wondering about your reaction to the forest. Yeah, well, actually 200 feet is, is a little low for a lot of those, uh, some of them way up at 250, nearly 300 feet, some of them. So they are absolutely yeah. magnificent structures uh, and, and huge buttress, buttresses around the trunk holding them up and then they just shoot off above the canopy. They're the most marvelous things. And, um, uh, and, and Ian um, recommended those to me because he believed they were the, he knew the show was about beauty. I'd asked him to nominate a, the, one of the world's most beautiful uh, rainforests. And he thought that beauty really was, uh, was created by these wonderful, wonderful buttress trees. And so, and so that's why I went, or that was one of the reasons I went. Um, and, uh, um, and he was right about that. I mean, they are magnificent. Of course, you can't, at least I couldn't, do a painting of an entire tree because it just disappears off into the, above the canopy and you can't see it really, yeah. unless, you're, <laughs> unless you're in a helicopter. Um, uh, but of course, um, it, it, it formed you know, the basis of a, of a wonderful, I thought, wonderful painting of just what it's like to sit in this very, very dense vegetation and, and admire you know, two or three fantastic trees. Yes. And then you painted, so this was in 2015, but also uh, you painted extensively the rainforest, rainforest of Costa Rica in 1992 for your mm -hmm. rainforest mm -hmm. diaries journey. Yeah. Yeah. And I, think I, I think I spent about five months in rainforest in Costa Rica. Yeah. You painted some beautiful large paintings there. Mm -hmm. And also uh, you painted rainforest in 2001 in Honduras as part of your watermarks uh, journey. Uh, going down the Rio Platano on yeah. a grand adventure. And I wonder if you could comment about just your experience in the rainforest spanning over 30 years in different rainforests and what are some of your impressions? Yeah, um, I suppose it, as, as someone who's not a botanist, um, it's a little difficult for me to describe the difference in the plants. I mean, they, to me, you know, they, they seem to be largely similar really. Um, I suppose the difficulties uh, are common to all in that you're always soaking wet, you're always covered in mud, 
you're always being bitten half to death by something or other um, and irritated beyond, almost beyond human endurance when you're sitting still. Um, the difference, I suppose, uh, the, 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 um, one of the practical dis difference I noticed was that, of course, the, uh, in South America, you don't get leeches, uh, whereas in, in the, the um, rainforests in, in, the, in the east, you get a lot of leeches and, and they were just, they, they are absolutely awful because no matter what you do about wearing little anti-leech gaiters and all those things that they produce in order to prevent you getting leeches, none of them work because these things are like little threads. They're called thread leeches and they're like a, like a thread of cotton almost when you see them. And so of course they can get into any, get through any defense that you happen to put up. And, and sitting still there, I, I, I could see them crawling towards me across the forest floor and they would, and they would crawl into your boots. And of course you wouldn't notice them really. Uh, I was too busy concentrating on my work to notice very much until you stood up and then you would hear this horrible squelching noise because they, they'd all, of course, been sucking my blood and, and swollen from the size of a thread to the size of my thumb. Uh, mm. And, of course, then you squashed them when you stood up. And it was just the most disgusting mess at the end of the day, which you had to get to wash all your socks out. And, it, mm. it, and there's something sort of creepy about that, sitting there knowing your blood is being extracted <laughs> by these horrible things. Um, so that was, one, the essence. <laughs> that was one, one very definite distance, uh, difference that I noticed. Um, but also, um, there is a sort of cleanliness, I think, about the buttress trees in Borneo. They, they, do, they do seem to have absolutely sheer, um, sheer trunks. And that, it must be, they must be a different sort of tree, I suppose. Um, because a lot of the South, the um, ones in Costa Rica and, and Honduras and so on, they, the, the, the trunks seem to be much more complex. Uh, whereas, whereas these are sort of beautifully simple, almost architectural. Um, and, and that seemed to be a difference. Um, other than that, uh, I don't know that there are any huge differences really. As I say, you're always covered in mud, you're always soaking wet, you're always bitten, um, <laughs> you're always too hot. Um, I guess also, I didn't see quite as many creatures in Borneo as I did in, in Costa Rica. And that may be because uh, the forest in Borneo does have the Penan tribe who are hunter-gatherers. And, and so they probably um, eat quite a lot of the, the animals that you might expect to see normally. Um, whereas in, in Costa Rica, I was working in a forest preserve where there weren't hobbit hunter gatherers. And, um, you know, people, people, the people, the local people there at much more um, what you might call ordinary, you know, standard beef and, and uh, so on produced uh, animals produced for eating. Uh, so there weren't any hunter-gatherers and that may have been a difference. I, I saw some, quite a lot of, you know, I saw snakes, I saw all sorts of things that people wouldn't eat, but I didn't see very much that, that you might consider to be edible fauna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whereas in Costa Rica, I did see quite a lot. So a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And in both experiences, you were sitting there for days. So animals could come to you and interact if they were. Ab absolutely, yes. Um, in Costa Rica in particular, they. The, by sitting in the same place day after day in complete silence um, and often completely still, I was often surrounded, well, not surrounded, but I often encountered at quite close quarters what you call megafauna, um, you know, yeah. giant, giant tapirs and, and uh, giant anteaters and, and all sorts of things like that, monkeys, lots and lots of monkeys. Um, oh, so, yeah. Mm. So, so for the process of finding a site in the rainforest, sounds like you can't really avoid the heat, the humidity, the leeches. So what was it about this site that um, compelled you to spend five days sitting here and painting these trees? Yeah, well, of course, it, in order to respect um, Ian Prance's um, uh, proposal, uh, of course, I had to find a buttress tree for a start. Um, and they're, they're not everywhere. I mean, they're, they're magnificent ones dotted about, but you have to look for them. Um, and then there has to be sufficient space between you and the buttress tree for you to be able to actually see it properly uh, and nothing too much in the way. But, but um, I think I walked around the forest for about three days before I finally hit on this particular spot. Um, and one of the great advantages for it, as far as I was concerned, was that there was a beautiful stream nearby which I could go and dive into when I got completely frustrated 
and too hot and cross. And, and or perhaps when things weren't going very well with the painting, I would I would take all my clothes off and jump in the, in the, this little river uh, and swim about a bit. And and that would have the advantage of washing the insects off and also cooling you cooling me down. So so that was quite a nice setting, and the sound of that trickling past that I sat painting was very was very pleasant. Um, it just there's just something about these things. It's not simply that you that you automatically are looking for certain things. You only know them when you see them. Um, and and as I rounded a corner in the trail, in the, through the forest, I simply came across it and thought, now that is that would work. And then you sort of circle the thing, looking for the correct perspective, and uh, you know trying to nail down exactly where you would sit and how that would work in practical terms. Um, and having figured all that out, uh, then, um, you know, after three days, you then return to that place and, and set yourself up and start work. So it's not to do with instinct really and, in, and inspiration, I suppose. There are certain things that just inspire you um, and you can't actually explain why really. So you're painting the paintings and what shows you to include these elements as the souvenirs mm. in these um, paintings? Well, I guess, um, of course, the thing about forests is they're very, very green. So um, it's nice if you can find something to contrast that. So in the big painting, as you see, I've got a, a seed pot with a brilliant red seed bursting out of it, um, which just which just looks so um, so beautiful against all that green. It's um, a, you know the, obviously the contrasting color or complementary color really. And similarly with that that um, red leaf, which has been gnawed by ants. So you can see not much left of it, but nonetheless, a lovely, lovely color. Uh, and I guess it was just, that's what attracted me really. And of course, I always try and find interesting stones just to say, you know, that that in the end, you know, this all comes down to earth really. Um, and so um, that, that the big painting has those. And then the little painting, I think has um, probably a bright, a little bright plant that I found. I don't know what it is. Uh, I never know what these plants are called. Um, and, and I don't want to know particularly. I've already tried to cope with far too much information that's coming in, visual information. And the last thing I want to do is to be burdened with, with the names of everything. Um, and so I'm, I'm not interested in that really. I'm simply interested in what they look like. Um, and the beads there uh, really are a reference to uh, uh, Nyapun, um, uh, someone I met in the rainforest, a Penan tribesman, hunter-gatherer, um, and we spent a delightful afternoon together. And, and uh, he and his two wives made uh, bead necklaces. So I promised when I got back to the UK that I would send him some, some beads from the UK, which I did. And, and those are just souvenirs of that encounter, really. The trick with, I guess, with painting in the rainforest is if you're not very careful, it could just end up looking like green wallpaper, um, you know, like a, a William Morris wallpaper. In other words, you wouldn't have any real features. And, and so the difficulty, apart from the physical difficulties, which I've all, also always mentioned um, about the, the, you know, the bugs and so on, um, it, it is very tricky to find actually a subject that isn't just leaves. Um, and so you have to wander around for a while until you get a sense of, of how you can convey this idea of this, you know, this fecundity of the forest and yet not make it look like wallpaper. Um, and so uh, you have to find something to kind of pin the painting on. And in all cases, I think in my, my, most of my rainforest paintings anyway, the subject of the thing is the actual magnificence of these wonderful trees. Um, and the other stuff in a way is sort of incidental. Um, uh, you know, obviously you've got leaves in front of it, you've got lianas, you've got all sorts of other things which Kind of tie the forms together, um, but but the 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 structure of the trees themselves are are what um, you know you really pin the painting on that. Sir Gillian uh, Prance had commented that he was hoping you would paint the rainforest of Borneo and share their beauty with the world, and by doing that, raising concern amongst the world to save the rainforest because so many of them are being cut down around the world. And um, do you feel that that's part of your work too? Absolutely, yes, of course. I mean, nobody can be can spend time in these places without being concerned for their destruction. Um, 
they are being destroyed at an absolutely alarming rate. And in, in Borneo, in order to get to Mulu, which is highly protected uh, as a World Heritage Site, um, but in order to get there, you have to fly in a Cessna from, from Miri, which is a little town on the coast, um, and you fly over mile after mile after mile of palm oil plantations. And that used to all be forest. And, mm. and you realize that the people who lived in it are now either um, you know, day laborers in some plantation or the palm oil plantation, uh, or they're more or less destitute um, because they used to be hunter gatherers and they lived a perfectly, as to them, perfectly, perfectly well balanced and comfortable life. And now they can't because there's not enough forest left for them. Just as there isn't enough forest left for the orang utangs and the and the and the colobus monkeys and all the other things that normally would inherit such a place, mm -hmm. um, and it, seem, it seems it um, seems you know it's a it's a terrible terrible um, uh, a, a terrible sight to see all that and then suddenly enter this fantastically beautiful forest. It, I mean the the, the cut off is absolute. It's it's palm oil plantation right up to the edge of the forest, and then this is protected, so therefore it remains where it is. I mean, mm. it's just, it's, it's just awful. Dramatic. Yeah, terrible, terrible. Mm. And, and, and so, yes, whatever I can do to help preserve it, I do, yes. Thank you very much for your time, Tony. Uh, you're very welcome. Oh.